Good evening and welcome to the Coon Rapids City Council meeting for Tuesday, September 19th, 2023. If you could please rise and join us for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Councilmember Griscoviak? Here. Councilmember Ray Rauer? Here. Councilmember Novak? Here. Councilmember Geisler? Here. Councilmember Armstrong? Here. Councilmember Carlson? Here. Mayor Cook? Here. All right, why don't we uh, adopt this evening's agenda? Motion to adopt the agenda, Mr. Mayor. Second. Motion by Carlson and a second by Novak to adopt the agenda. Is there any corrections or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And the agenda is adopted. And we have um, a proclamation to start the meeting out. Proclaim October Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, okay. Whereas the community problem of domestic violence has become a critical public health and welfare concern in Anoka County, and whereas domestic violence is a crime, the commission of which will not be tolerated in Anoka County, and perpetrators of said crime are subject to prosecution and conviction in accordance with the law, and whereas over thousands of women, men, and children have and will continue to ex access assistance from Alexandra House Incorporated, a domestic violence service provider, and whereas domestic violence will be eliminated through community partnerships of concerned individuals and organizations working together to prevent abuse while at the same time affecting social and legal change, and whereas October is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and whereas during National Domestic Violence Awareness Month, Anoka County organizations will inform area residents about domestic violence, its prevalence, consequences, and what we, as a concerned community, can do to eliminate its existence. Now, therefore, I, Jerry Cook, Mayor of the City of Coon Rapids, on behalf of the City Council and citizens of our city, officially proclaim October to be Domestic Violence Awareness Month in the city of Coon Rapids, proclaimed this 19th day of September, 2023. Um, and that will be posted at their annual <clears throat> Hope Fest. No, their walk. Their Hope Walk? I'm getting my organizations mixed up, aren't I? There is a walk. There is a walk. Is. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. I was just going to. Take a peek here if that's on our thing. Hope Festival. All proclamations event. from cities within Anoka County will be posted on Alexandra House's social media sites and Alexandra House's Hope Fest event. I was so close. <laughs> Hope Fest event is September September 30th, 2023 at City Hall Plaza in Anoka. And all the information is on their website and it's a great and worthy cause and you can make a donation. You might even still be able to get a shirt. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Right. We are up to the minutes from the September 5th, 2023 meeting. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Griscoviak. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of September 5th, 2023. Second. second. Motion by Griscoviak and a second by Ray Rauer. Is there any discussion or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And those minutes are approved. <coughs> um, nothing on the consent agenda. <laughs> unusual mm -hmm. all right uh, item three hold a public hearing and consider resolution 23-95 granting approval of conduit bond financing Mississippi view apartments um, oh Miss Hanson you're gonna do this one because you don't look at all like Matt Brown <laughs> no <laughs> I'm, Mr. Mayor, I'm handling this one for Matt Brown um, so the council is asked to conduct a public hearing and consider approval of conduit debt financing for 
proposed project at Mississippi View Apartments. Um, this is a 96 unit um, apartment community, um, which a Seattle based entity, Vitus, is proposing to acquire and invest um, some money to rehabilitate the property. Uh, the proposed project has an estimated cost of just over 29 million um, with improvements of a exceeding 50,000 per unit. Um, part of the proposed financing includes tax exempt housing revenue bonds through the city as well as some low income housing tax credit equity. Um, the council is asked to authorize uh, housing revenue bonds up to 20 million this evening. Um, happy to answer any questions as best I can. We also have a representative from Vitus attending virtually, uh, Mr. Jackson Reed, if you have questions of, of them as well. Okay, thank you. Does anybody have any questions on this? It seems like a win win. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, 2000. I toured these shortly after they were redone the last time, and it was very impressive, and now it's been. 16 years, and I guess it's time for another investment. So, Mr. Mayor. Council Member Geisler. Um, I know we have, we have to do well, the we public, have to do a we public, public hearing public first. Hearing. That's right. Thank um, you. Let's, so, is yep. there, are there any questions? Hearing no questions. On the matter of uh, granting approval of a conduit bond on uh, Mississippi View Apartments, we're opening the public hearing. Is anybody to address council? Um, on the public hearing for granting approval of conduit bond financing, Mississippi View Apartments. We will close the public hearing. Councilmember Geisler. Mr. Ryan, I just want to make sure that, you know, when people understand that we we're doing this and when it talks about conduit, the city is not responsible for these funds. We just um, facilitate that transaction. So there's no obligation to the city to do this. It's just our way of being able to help the business in the city and to help improve the, the rental um, property. So with that, I will make a motion to adopt resolution 23-95, authorizing the sale and delivery of conduit housing revenue bonds for the Mississippi View Apartments project. Second. Motion by Geisler and a second by um, Carlson. Is there any further discussion on this? Mr. Mayor. Council Member Griscoli. I'd just like to add to Council Member Geiser's statements, that's exactly right. But the one thing that the council does do is say, this is a good investment in the community. We all agree that that is $50,000 of renovation per unit is about a $5 million renovation to this building, making it about a $29 million property in Coon Rapids with great housing. So with that, I fully support it. All right, any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Um, Mr. Stemwettle, did the representative invite us? I should have actually asked if they wanted to weigh in before we made the motion. We're not going to take it away from them now. But <laughs> Mayor Council Jackson Reed is online if you would like to hear from him. Otherwise, he was primarily there to answer questions should any arise. So Okay. Yeah. I think we're good then. All right, I think we're good. Thank you. Thank right. you for being here. Of course. Maybe I just did that. <laughs> if he's paying attention. <laughs> he's watching right now. Isn't okay, all right. I was just going to send him a message. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, fourth on our consent, or I'm sorry, not, no consent agenda this evening. Fourth on our agenda this evening under new business is to consider resolution 23-94, supporting a Minnesota Highway Freight Program grant application. And I assume, Mr. Himmer, you're going to hit the highlights of this one? Yes, Mr. Mayor, Council. Um, as we consider funding options for the 610 East River Road interchange, we're out there looking for all, all opportunities that exist. The freight program is currently out there. The deadline would be October 13th. Uh, we fit within certain category. Uh, the funding could be up to $10 million. Uh, we're in the process of putting the application together. This is just one step in the process to try to secure some of that additional construction funding. So I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Excellent. Any questions for Mr. Hammer? Mr. Mayor, Councilor Vergerskoviak, the um, the grant funds those are those are federal funds, correct? Not Minnesota funds. I believe these are state funds. These are state funds. Okay, looking it over, it looked like it kind of falls uh, com comes through the federal government through the state of Minnesota. But I just in any case, we've been asking you know to find funds for this project anywhere we can, and I just appreciate you finding this uh, grant opportunity. 
I mean, it could fund up to 80% of the project. I know that there's not that many dollars available, but uh, fully support going after it. All right. Supported enough to make a motion? Or? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, somebody else can. That's fine. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Council Member Novak. I, uh, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I will move that we adopt resolution 23-94, supporting the city's 2023 Minnesota Highway Freight Program grant application for the uh, 610 and East River Road full access interchange project. Second. second. Motion by Novak and a second by Ray Rauer. Is there further discussion on this? Mr. Mayor. Council Member Griscovia. Just one more thing. I know it would be a big deal if we were able to get some of these grant funds. So I would just ask that if there's anything that the council can do, anything that our state legislators can do to help us kind of position this. I know there's going to be a grading system in this. I know there's a lot of freight coming in and out of that area. It's probably our heaviest freight area in the city of Coon Rapids. So we should grade somewhere, hopefully, whatever we need to do to get the best grade possible. Let us know. Thank you. Very good. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Item five is to consider resolution 23-92, accepting waste prevention and recycling grant funds from Anoka County. And we got like batting a thousand though. <laughs> Ms. Sinclair isn't here. So who wants to handle this one? <laughs> Mr. Stem, oh, Mr. Hammer, all right. <laughs> Thanks again, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, the city was successful in receiving an additional $25,000 grant through the SCORE funding. Um, Colleen had identified several items. It's just improving some of the petroleum products that we have in store. Um, more household waste items that can be recycled. We have that reuse program currently running now with the new uh, building. So we got some shelving for that. And then we also have some updated signage uh, for the site following that remodel project. So uh, all that was contained in the agreement. We were awarded the funds. We have to spend them by the end of the year. And we have a plan to get going on that. So if uh, council has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, it's uh, accepting this grant for 25000 from Anoka County. Excellent. Your Honor. Councilman Bray Rower. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 23-92, accepting the waste prevention and recycling grant funds from Anoka County. Second. Motion by Ray Rauer and a second by Geisler. Is there a discussion? Mr. Hammer, I assume when it says solo cups, they don't mean to be actually proprietary or specific to that <laughs> brand. They must be just talking about plastic cups in general? That's correct, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Mm -hmm. that right. It's the easiest way to uh, explain it. <laughs> Let's put red solo cup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any further discussion on this? We have a motion and a second. All in. F don't we? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Item six is to consider purchase of fire engine and resolution 23-93, declaring official intent to reimburse certain expenditures from the proceeds of bonds. Now this says Chief Piper, but it seems like we're wading into Ms. Hansen's territory, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Chief, or, or what? Oh, it is gonna be Ms. Hansen. I'll let, no, I'll <laughs> let the Chief speak and then I'll, I'll add anything regarding the bonds or the, the intent. All right. Mayor, council members, the truck is in the budget, as you know. Uh, the reason we're here before you tonight and get it ordered a few months early is because it's a two-year wait time on uh, the delivery. So that's kind of the short version of why we're here. And from the financial picture, uh, Ashley can explain that. <laughs> yes, Mr. Mayor. So we're, in, we're anticipating that the, per, um, the expense for the chassis will hit in 2024 and the truck will be completed in 25. And we're anticipating that we'll issue equipment certificates when the truck is completed. In order to reimburse ourselves that initial expenditure in 24, we just need to declare official intent that we will do so. And that has to be made no later than 60 days after the expenditure. But since we're coming before you for approval for the order, I figured it would be a good time to ask for that intent as well. Excellent. So. So Chief, even taking advantage of the cooperative purchasing contract with the Houston Galveston Area Council, the base cost on an engine is $924,000 now? 
Yeah, dram dramatic, in Mayor Council members, dramatic increase from just a couple, three years ago with uh, everything that's happened. But yeah, that's across the board that's happening. Wow. Um, but when it, when it says base cost, I mean, that, that really, that's really got most of the stuff on it though, right? Mayor Council, yes, that's, that's the, the, the final product. Okay. Complete. We're not getting the cabin chassis okay. for 924,000. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Mr. Mr. Stemwell? It, it's uh, good to note too, as we looked at this last year and we're contacted by Rosenbauer, uh, we would expect them to have cost increases into the new year. And so we're sort of locking in the 2023 price by ordering it now. If we wait till January when everything's buttoned up and approved with the budget, we would expect it to be more expensive at that time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we'll just see if they follow through at that price. Yeah. It seems to me we ran into that a number of we years have, ago. We have, yeah. It's, that has settled down a little bit in the last year or so, but <laughs> certainly we ran into that a number of times. All right. Um, Council? Mr. Mayor. Council Member Geisler. I'll make a motion to authorize the purchase of one fire engine and adopt resolution 2393 declaring the official intent to reimburse certain expenditures from proceeds of bonds. Second. Second. Motion by Geisler, and wow, that was really a race, <laughs> but I'm gonna give it to Novak because he's right next to me. <laughs> well, plus I think he won, but you know, it was close. Uh, motion by Geisler, second by Novak. Further discussion on this? Uh, Mr. Mayor. Council Member Griscoviak. Yeah, just a few things on this one. Uh, first, I mean, we, we talked about this in our budget session, right? And I asked some questions about, you know, why do we need this piece of equipment? The uh, fire chief uh, definitely answered all those questions adequately. I know that our community places a high priority on public safety. I mean, especially um, police and fire. So I definitely support getting this new fire engine. I mean, we want to have quality new equipment out there plus redundancy. And so that's what we have for this. So. Um, but that said, I would like to talk about paying for this with bonds in 2025. We have 425 budgeted in 2024 for the chassis, and I think we were going to budget another 450 or so for the rest of it in 25. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering, I, I want to question why we would be bonding for, for this and how much would we be bonding because, you know, we're getting ourselves into a little bit of a, uh, well, we've got a lot of debt, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, I mean, if, it, if we're bonding for a million dollar fire truck over I don't know how many years, we're gonna be adding interest on that that our taxpayers have to bear. Now, I would just like to have the discussion, does it make the most sense to bond for this piece of equipment, knowing that um, our turnaround or our life expectancy on trucks is around 10 years? I know that we bond for big stuff, roads, infrastructure, even the fire station itself, uh, but those are, you know, multi-generational, definitely lasting more than 10 years. So, so my first question is, what would be our intent to bond in 2025 with the proceeds of bonds? How much for the truck? Mr. Stemmel? You know, uh, Mayor and Council, I'll have Ms. Hansen sort of explain how the equipment certificates work, and they aren't necessarily the same as traditional bonds like we would pay for street reconstruction or, or buildings. Um, but in the end, a lot of it comes down to the sort of cash balance we have in our uh, capital fund and sort of needing for these very big purchases rather than deplete that cash balance and maybe needing to levy at a higher amount to compensate for that. You can spread that out over a little bit of time with these equipment certificates and kind of smooth out the ebb and flow. So, Ms. Hansen, if you could elaborate on that, please. <laughs> yes. Um, so... When we talk about equipment certificates, it's the, or when we issue bonds, we have to refer to statutory authority. Um, so the Minnesota statutes give authority to issue equipment certificates, um, but it goes through the same process as a bond. And so the city has a practice of issuing bonds for reconstruction, and um, this would likely just be tacked onto the amount that we would issue. Um, so the resolution before you ha puts the maximum at a million, and that's to kind of cover any issuance costs. Um, and to echo what Mr. Stemmoto was saying, so we do have that capital equipment levy, and we have a 10-year replacement plan with equipment, and so we project out kind of where that cash balance will be. Um, without using equipment certificates for some of these larger fire engine purchases that are a million plus, we would have to recommend a larger increase in that annual levy to be able to, to cover that. 
Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Councilor Bukoskovia. Don't really like the term tacked on. I don't like, I don't well, like the fact that we tack on a million dollars to our bond. Yeah. That one kind of struck me funny. But um, uh, what kind of bond term would we expect? I mean, blink, 10 years? It would not exceed the life of the, the engine, so likely 10 years. And what would you anticipate our interest rate when we go to bond in 2025? I mean, again, I, I accepted quite a bit of bonding over the last few years because it made sense. I mean, we're, I, I think some of our bonds were, were they 1%? I know they were under two, uh, but that's not the case anymore. I mean, a million dollar bond, we could be tacking on literally hundreds of thousands of dollars of taxpayer money onto this. We might just as well, we've got 450 budgeted in 2024 without bonding. We should be able to figure out where to uh, levy another 450 in 2025 and, and just pay for this outright. I will, I will say that the reimbursement, so the reason that we have the resolution is that when we would go to issue the equipment certificate in 25, it would be to reimburse ourselves for the 425 that we would spend in 24. Um, and this is just giving us the ability to reimburse ourselves. We're not locking ourselves into issuing that in two years. There are other ways we could look at lease purchase packages or in the next two years look at adjusting that capital equipment levy. This is just giving us the ability to, in 2025, when, that, when the full truck is here, we can reimburse ourselves. Mm -hmm. We can utilize this method of financing to pay for it. So to that end, Mayor Council, what your action tonight is just declaring that that's a possibility and leaving that option open. I mean, to give you a sense, though, with that um, capital equipment fund, you know, our annual levy is less than a million dollars. And so to, to add, you know, 500000 each year for the sole purpose of purchasing this fire truck is, you know, 50% increase to that. Um, and, you know, we did a lot of machinations with the levy this year. We know what that 500,000 would, you know, pretty significantly increase the total levy. <clears throat> but to that end, there are trade-offs, you know, and, and interest cost is one of those. I think when we did bonds this year, where were we at three-ish three three -ish percent? Um, you know, we expect it to come down very quickly anytime soon, unless the Fed starts no. to change their policy. And I, I don't see that happening in the near term, you know, projecting out to 24 and 25 is a little tricky as far as what those interest rates might be, but I would imagine be in that ballpark. Mr. Mayor, okay. again, full, fully support this equipment. I mean, again, our residents, they, they, you know, they place a high value on it. And I think our residents would be willing to pay for it. I mean, in the sound, in sound fiscal policy, I think, would be to save our taxpayers a couple hundred thousand dollars over the course of 10 years and get this thing paid off over the next couple of years. Sure, it would affect the levy, uh, but I think we have good reason to do that. Is, you know, why, why borrow money if we don't need to? Council? Yeah. Well, and, and right now we're, we're not borrowing the money, we're just leaving the option open to borrow the money. So I think it's a, it's a hill we can die on another day. Yeah. But. Yeah, and, and Mr. Mayor, I'll. Councilor Robert Geisler? Make a comment. You know, and so. Yeah, is it a pay me now, pay me later kind of a thing? And so if I look at the levy, you know, we were really trying to squeeze down with you what bet. we had now. And basically, we would need to increase it by 50%. You know, and so you would have very high levy years for those couple of years to pay for it. And by using um, the equipment certificates, it allows that more even flow. And so that's one of the things that we try and do for our residents is to not have big spikes in their tax bills. That, you know, it's a really big this year and then, okay, we low and then it's really big the next year. And then having more predictability, I think, is important. Um, and so this gives us that option to be able to say how much in our reserves do we have, what can we pay off, and then what do we need to fund with these equipment certificates to be able to keep that more even flow so nobody has a surprise in their mailbox. To, to be clear though, it wouldn't affect the levy by 50%, that was just the capital equipment was a million dollars. That portion of that the portion. levy. That portion of the levy, correct. Yeah. 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 
But I think, um, Mayor Council, I, I mean, it would be somewhere in the, you know, one to one and a half percent increase it, using 2024's preliminary levy as an example. We ended up at 6.8%, I think. Um, we had to remove around $350,000, $400,000 to go from 7.8 to 6.8. So just to give you a sense of scale there of what sort of impact that would have. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, what I would suggest is for the sake of leaving the option open of approving what's being presented tonight, if council's interested in having a conversation about you know, where else we might be able to pay this from, what the advantages of those options are we can certainly do that between now and when you know, we need to make a more formal decision about how to fund it okay. sure okay mm -hmm. mr mayor Councilor Roger Skowiak. would it be possible to authorize the pre uh the pre-order of the fire engine and not adopt resolution 2393 declaring official intent to reimburse expenditures from the proceeds of bonds you're in Councilor Roger, well let's get his answer question answered first though Ms. Hansen, do you want to field that one? Yeah, it's certainly possible not to approve that. Um, it, ultimately, we have until 60 days after an expenditure to make this in declaration of intent. And so if we don't get the chassis until mid to late next year and we have conversations and decide that that's the route we want to go, we can certainly bring back um, another um, action item for the council. Councilor yeah. Rearower? Yeah, um, for myself, I would like to have this option open and be able to vote on this tonight. It doesn't mean that we're going to use it, and then we can have a work session to discuss whether or not we want to use the option. But I would like to make sure that we do get the votes so that that is in place so that we can, mm -hmm. um, if we decide to go that route, we can just continue to move forward with it. Mr. Mayor. Okay. Councilor Novak. Hey, Ms. Hansen, just to clarify, what we're looking at here is an absolute last resort. If nothing else can pay for this, then we have the ability to bond for it and then pay for it. I view if it that's what the council decides, yeah. mainly that this is in place, this can be done. It doesn't mean we have to do it this way. Right. Right. Correct. Yep. Thank this you. just allows us so that we can reimburse ourselves for the amount that we would spend in 24 if we mm -hmm. decide that we wanted to use another financing mechanism. I think to Councilmember Griscoviak's point, and correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> this forces the this would force the conversation though. Whereas normally we would just reimburse ourselves, we would just do the equipment, the equipment bonding or whatever that was term was again. Equipment yeah. certificates. Equipment certificate, and uh, so I, I I get it is to keep it to keep it alive to keep it to force the conversation. Um, I guess nobody's asked me, but I I guess I support just going through with it. But then, trusting Mr. Stemwittle to make a note to bring it back to us. <laughs> Mayor Council, yeah, duly noted, I will not just yeah, sort of sneak it through at some future date when we're talking about bonding. We will have a conversation in the somewhat near term to, you know, once we've, we can do a little analysis on what other options might be, and, you know, when time is right, we'll bring that back to Council. All right. Mr. Mayor. Good. What? Mr. Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Councilmember Carlson. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to say that I, I totally support what Councilmember Griscoviak is saying, um, but I would like to you know, move it through, and, and we'll be assured that this will go to a work session and something so we can have more discussion. Okay. All right. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion on this? Mr. Mayor, I just have one more thing to say, if I might. Okay. Councilmember and Griscoviak. That is, I mean, I certainly wouldn't want to go on record as voting no on this fire engine. I mean, that would be completely counter to what my residents want. Uh, that said, I, I would like us to take a look at this. Just for the simple fact that just to keep it in mind, I mean, we've got some big bonding going on. We're bonding for a lot of infrastructure projects. Re, you know, our water and our sewer, we got the, you know, we just did the fire station. We're doing the water tower. There's a lot of stuff coming up where we're going to be borrowing heavily into the future. And whatever we can do to kind of limit that and keep that um, fiscally constrained, um, I'd like to, of course, keep all that on the table. So that's, I've said enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for hearing me out. <laughs> Thank you. Any further discussion on this? We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Item seven. 
consider a Golf Tech Bunker Hills lease renewal. Mr. Anderson, it's great to see your smiling face back here. <laughs> it's great to be here. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, asking you to consider a lease renewal for Golf Tech at Bunker Hills. Uh, there are no significant changes in that lease. Uh, monthly rent is proposed to increase and then escalate each year as our uh, utility expenses that takes into account you know, the aging, uh, operating an aging building and, and caring for it uh, over time. Um, it's, it's amazing. It's been 10 years. This is the third agreement. Uh, 10 years flies by when you are having fun, and we certainly are. <laughs> At Bunker Hills, um, we strongly believe that Golf Tech is a strong brand uh, in golf and beyond. We believe it strengthens Bunker Hills' brand on site. And beyond that, the staff uh, of Golf Tech is extraordinarily professional. And that strengthens um, our image at Bunker Hills. That staff is led by Center Manager Oliver Darby, who I have with me today. Very good. Mr. Uh, Darby? Mr. Welcome. Mayor, Council Members. I apologize for my unprofessional attire, but <laughs> he works me too hard. I came straight from the golf course, so it's, it's not here we are. But uh, yeah, just to reiterate uh, Tim's points, gosh, the time has flown by. I remember being here with Tim five years ago when we renewed, and it seems mm -hmm. like it was last week, but uh, it's a great relationship that we have with the city of Coon Rapids, and uh, long may it continue. Excellent. Excellent. Mr. Anderson, I just had a, a quick question. Um, so I assume because it's still in here, it's going well that they're, they're, they sell the clubs now? Because you used to sell the clubs out of the pro shop, right? We still do sell golf clubs, but the majority of club sales are through Golf Tech, and okay. then the agreement um, deals with all of that. It used to be a different language in the agreement that was, that was quite a bit back and forth. This makes it much, much more simple. And it's a, better, uh, it's a better experience for the customer. OK. Um, and then the other question I had was, um, Bunker Hills shall provide 50 guest passes to Golf Tech for client use, but the guest passes shall not be used by Golf Tech for playing lessons. So what do they use them for then? Uh, they use them for promotions, for to bring a, a new clients in oh. and to reward clients. Um, that's, that's another part of this is that there are instructors all over the metro area, not just at Golf Tech, Bunker Hills, there are other centers. And those instructors come to Bunker Hills and provide lessons. The city receives a percentage of that um, and receives greens fees and cart revenue through those playing lessons. Oh, excellent. All right. Anybody have any questions of Mr. Anderson or Mr. Darby? Your Honor. Uh, it's great to hear from both of you. I, I appreciate that the partnership is a positive one and working from both sides. So um, I think it's just a win-win. And with that, I will make a motion to approve a lease renewal with Gulf Tech for operation of the Gulf Instruction Learning Center at Bunker Hills. Second. second. Motion by Ray Rauer and a second by Armstrong. Was that Armstrong that said that? Mm -hmm. I thought so. All right. Um, is there further discussion on this? Mr. Mayor? Councilor Robert just, Armstrong? Just a quick comment. I, my normal job, I, I am about an hour from the cities here, and I have a number of guys in my office that will come all the way up to, to Bunker Hills to golf, and I know we, they drive past a number of courses to get here, so That's great. thumbs up to you guys. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Was, wasn't there somebody from Colorado that was originally here? Because I, um, from Golf Tech? Or is that where the CEO is or something? No, uh, Mayor Council, you are correct. The original, the original contract, Mike Clinton from Colorado, from, that's where the corporate office is, yeah. was here. And uh, that's when you executed the original agreement, was 10 years ago. Okay. All right. Mr. Mayor? Okay. Council Member Novak? Uh, just a quick comment. I didn't realize until I was elected and looked at the budget so carefully that that golf course brings a lot of money into our city. And thank you. You guys do a fantastic job over there. Thank you. Thanks. Well, it's an enterprise fund, too, so they better do. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion and a second to um, approve the uh, Golf Tech uh, lease. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 
and that motion carries. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Uh, we are up to open mic public comment. Is anybody here to address council for open mic this evening? All right. Okay. <laughs> open mic provides an opportunity for the public to address the city council on subjects that are not part of the regular meeting agenda. The public is invited to express any concerns they may have which are relevant to the affairs, policies, or practices of the city of Coon Rapids. Remarks will be limited to three minutes. Please approach the podium and state your name and address before addressing the council. And uh, open mic is not a time for problem solving, but for hearing the speaker for informational purposes only. Questions from council will be for clarification only. Yes. Hey, okay, my name is Rochelle Shackle. I live at 10020 Larch Street in the Woodcrest area. I've been a resident of Coon Rapids all my life. I've owned this house for 26 years. Nobody knows the Woodcrest area. It's slab homes. It's a cul-de-sac area. The only entrance into Woodcrest is off of 99th and Coon Rapids Boulevard extension. Mm -hmm. I got some proposals here. Uh, when I first moved in, I enjoyed walking through the two parks. Uh, Wintercrest, and I've approached Greg on this matter a number of times, and the Woodcrest Park. Uh, about 10 years ago, you guys inundated that disc golf course. I don't even have a clue what you guys were thinking. You already had two full-size ballparks that are highly active in Wintercrest. You got the sliding hill, you got the skating rink, and now you inundated that disc golf course. There's one out at Bunker. And I have no safe place to walk my dogs. I got a multiple pet license. I got four Huskies and two cats. I used to be a runner, but I walk my dogs a lot. Because all the traffic in Woodcrest, because again, one side you got train tracks, the back side you got the parks, the other side you got Woodcrest. Now with this disc golf course, it's unsafe to walk on the street because you get all the traffic a lot of people come from the other end of the neighborhood and come all the way down to Kumquat, Larch, and Magnolia to enter and exit this neighborhood, that neighborhood. Plus, you got the ballpark traffic coming in and out of that neighborhood. And then you got the people that think they can approach the businesses on Woodcrest coming into that side of the neighborhood. Got a lot of traffic. I might as well have moved on Northdale Boulevard. You know, again, uh, I got some proposals here. Uh, the first proposal is all disc golf courses are different. They got a different number of holes. I've asked Greg and he said they were gonna change it by the end of August, but it fell through because they lost the director or something from the golf course. But you got hole 21. It's on the top of the sliding hill. Are, are you all familiar with that big sliding hill over there off of Woodcrest by Holmes Furniture? They stand on top of the hill, you got two places where you can place the basket. One at the bottom and one far out by the corner of the west uh, ballpark. And that's where they seem to put it. So you got people standing on top of that hill, wailing those things out there. I used to walk around both ballparks. I used to walk out in, in the woods, but I can't anymore because you got that all inundated through the back part of Woodcrest, the back part of Wintercrest, and the one side of Wintercrest by the Jeep dealer. You can't even walk in there because those discs are all over the place. You got 21 holes. I'm begging you to eliminate hole 21 where you stand on top of the hill and throw those things wildly like that. At least do that. That's my first proposal. My second proposal would be you got so much traffic that comes in the back half to park to go to those two ballparks. I don't even understand why you still have those two ballparks. I can't think of any other park in Coon Rapids that has two ballparks like that. You redid Sand Creek a couple years ago and you inundated that with 20 ballparks or something, 15, 20? And you, how many, 16? Six. Yeah, and you took away all that park and now you've taken away this park. Parks are for everybody's recreation, for whatever activity they want to do. And when you inundate these things like you do, I know I'm not the only person that you, you know, parks are built for but walking on the streets ain't an option during the winter time the sidewalks don't get plowed over there so on the 101st lane i would ask to put a no parking side you know either on the residential side or the park side because you get both people line up on both sides well 
you can only get one car through. It, it's, it's ridiculous. My third proposal is to limit how many days you can play over there. Maybe Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, or Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, have one weekend day off. They're there every Saturday and Sunday, which I don't understand, from 8 in the morning till 9 at night playing ball. And then you got the people disc playing, and then when they have their tournaments, they set up their baskets all over the place to practice. You know, people that just want to walk in the park or have a picnic or enjoy the park, you can't. And my last proposal is way out there. So next year we get street assessments in Woodcrest, we're going to do the sewers and the streets and the curbs. And because those last three streets, Kumquat, Larch, the one I live on in Magnolia, get used so much, then why don't we make the city park pay for 10% of my assessment fees because all the added traffic on the road I live on. Again, I should be living on Northdale Boy. I'm sorry if I'm sounding so heisty. Yeah. I'm really out front. <laughs> and just something, I'm highly educated, five diplomas. I like to brag. Mm -hmm. High school, two welding. I went mm -hmm. to Anoka Votech three times for auto mechanics, military vet, two years active, four years National Guard. I ain't no fool, but yeah, please, please do something here. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's all I have to say. I can drop this off. You can drop it off with our city clerk right is, there. Is there any reason, do they gotta have a permit to play at Sand Creek? Permit to play, is it Sand Creek? Well, at Sand Creek, do they have to have a permit? No. Is no. there any other? They just schedule through our, our recreational supervisor. The one over in Wintercrest, can they just go there or they gotta schedule? I mean, if it's a formal game, they would need to schedule through, I mean, if it's just kids playing pickup, no. Okay, these are all good questions to call staff with. We gotta get back. <laughs> Thank, you Thank you very much. You. All right, uh, anybody else for open mic tonight? We'll close that portion of the meeting. I have two responses from previous open mics. Um, open mic response for Don, uh, Mr. Don Heitmiller, Butternut Street. Um, he was concerned about property maintenance activity related to storage of trash containers and a trash enclosure located in his front yard. Um, so basically we've just gone through and explained Title 8 of the City Code requires that residential solid waste and recycling containers must be placed no closer to the street than the existing front yard setback of the residents. Containers that are prepared for collection must be placed in one location at ground level and off the traveled roadway such as in the driveway or in the boulevard behind the curb, no sooner than 4 p.m. the day prior to collection. Such containers must be returned to their outside storage locator location no later than midnight on the date of collection. Further, Title 11 of City Code requires that accessory structures, which include trash enclosures, may not be located nearer to the front lot line than the principal building. Mm -hmm. um, and in general, property maintenance staff receive very few complaints related to front yard trash enclosures. These types of structures are not commonly constructed on residential property. Um, and apparently this, uh, what started this was a property maintenance courtesy letter pertaining to these code violations was sent to this gentleman in August after city staff received a complaint from a neighbor. City property maintenance staff has been in contact with him about resolving the issue. Um, and then the other open mic uh, is on the goose management plan and uh, two meeting attendees expressed concern with the city's goose removal methods and asked the council to consider other options. Um, for reference, the city's goose management plan, which provides additional information on this matter, can be found on the city's website, and the plan does allow for other options to address geese other than removal from the various sites. And that's all I've got for reports on previous open mics, and we are up to other business. Mayor Mr. Council, Stemple. since Chief Piper is here, I thought he might be able to give us an update on the fire open house that's coming up on September 30th. Chief Piper. Ma Mayor, council members, yes, we're looking forward to it. I believe we moved it up a week this year, so it'll be at Sand Creek Park and everything will be there and uh, we invite people out. It's a normal thing with a lot of different activities, sit in the fire truck, spray the hose, cookies, juice, uh, a variety of demonstrations and uh, we invite everybody over uh, uh, for the day. and then. Uh, 
possibly next year if the fire station is complete by then. Uh, we'll, I'm, going, I'm, I'm being optimistic here. Yeah. But anyway, we'll, uh, I'm thinking out loud that we'll probably do the open house at the new fire station. We have plenty of room there with, uh, with the, 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 the space we have there, plus, of course, with the uh, parking at Anoka Ramsey. All right. So the firehouse, the fire station open house um, is going to be at Sand Creek Park, 10 a.m. to noon, Saturday, September 30th. Correct. Right. Okay, very good. Yeah, and I encourage anybody that's watching this, if you haven't been out to that, make sure you get out there. It's just very good, especially if you have kids or grandkids. Um, but everybody seems to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it, it, it's really worked out well for us because then we can put all of our resources there and you come to one location and see everything versus before we kind of move things between the three stations. So it, I think the, uh, the idea has worked out well. Although I could slip around to all three stations and eat cookies, and nobody knew how many cookies I was eating. <laughs> this is yeah. true. We'll make sure we have enough. <laughs> all right. Other business? Um, stopped by the farmer's market last week. That was, uh, that was good. So that, that's going to be going through the middle of October, I believe. That's the plan. Wednesdays, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. at the Coon Rapids Ice Center. All right. So tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow's a Wednesday, yeah. All right, other business to come before council? Mr. Mayor. Council Member Griscovia. I received the notice, I think it was yesterday, uh, certainly this week, that the Met Council is seeking applications for the Transportation Advisory Committee. I'm wondering if staff knows if there's current <coughs> committee vacancies in our area. Maybe, maybe you might know. Mayor, Council, I would have to look that up. I do know that those appointments get made a couple of ways. Some of them are at large. Uh, Metro Cities, which is a member organization in which we participate, also has authority to nominate TAC and TAB members. And one of the things we look closely at in that as I'm on the board of that organization is geographic representation for the counties in the region and then sort of spreading it throughout the cities. And so I know that's fairly well balanced, but the TAC um, in general, I, I couldn't tell you exactly if, you know, Anoka County is over or underrepresented as far as that goes. Okay, I'll do some further research on it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look into it as well. I, mean, I, I know from a TAB perspective, mm -hmm. there are citizen representatives and we are represented, represented there from the city. Mm -hmm. Just didn't know how many, how many would be represented, so I'll okay. check into that. Um, um, this week on Thursday, the 21st, Paladin Technical High School is celebrating their 20th anniversary. Um, five to seven, I think it is. Pretty sure. Anyway, that should be good. That's an impressive school. Okay, any other business? Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Council Member Griscovia. I know, I'm really busy tonight. <laughs> I made a lot of notes. Um, uh, next Tuesday, we have a work session uh, on the trash hauling. And I'm wondering that it sounds like it's you know, a bigger meeting. I'll probably be here in the council chambers. Is, uh, so this is a question for staff. Is that going to be a televised meeting? Is it, or is it, you know, how is it being um, promoted to the public? Sure. Mayor and council, uh, the intent as it is as of today, unless council wants to direct otherwise, is that it would be conducted much like our council work session. So it would not be televised although we were planning to hold it in the council chambers. Um, primarily, it's a meeting between the council and the haulers and their representatives. Certainly, it's, it's a meeting that will be publicly noticed because it's a quorum of the city council, so folks are um, able to come watch the meeting and observe if they're interested. If council would rather it be recorded, um, we can certainly make accommodations for that, but given that we were, I guess, intending to host it much like we would a work session. Uh, we don't record work sessions and, uh, or take minutes for those because it's not an official meeting of the city council where you can make formal decisions. So that's kind of been the standard we've used for whether or not to televise a meeting. But that's, that's open for council direction if you know, you'd be interested in that. Okay. Right. Any appetite on that, council? I mean, I typically, I, I know, yeah. historically, we don't televise uh, the work sessions. All the public's certainly welcome. All the interested mm -hmm. public can show up and hear and see what's going on. Um, I just was asked by a constituent, so I thought I'd mm -hmm. 
yeah. make sure I get it in public meeting here. Yeah. I'm a little conflicted because I know that people speak more candidly True. when it's not televised. And I think we have a lot to hash out that night. Yeah. Um, but I, I could go either way. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Council Member Carlson? It, it's a work session, so I'd like to handle it like we'd handle a normal work session. Fair enough. Fair enough. Ms. Ask. Mr. Novak? Just to weigh in on that briefly, people are so passionate on both sides. <laughs> I'd rather not tempt fate and make <laughs> this into a circus. So what does that mean? <laughs> uh, I would rather it just simply be a work session and have oh. it not be televised. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was, I Sorry, sure. <laughs> didn't make that clear. <laughs> okay. All right. I think we're uh, we've got a theme going. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Any other business to come before council this evening? Mr. Mayor, <laughs> I feel like you're like Columbo. You never leave the room. You know? Oh, just one more thing. One more thing. One more thing. Um, and this is for, for Chief Steiner. I, I, there was a, a message last week that one of your, um, I think, uh, detectives, if I'm not mistaken, Tanya Harmonic, it was promoted to police chief. I'm just captain. Uh, captain. 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 <laughs> captain. <laughs> not oh. Yeah. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Maybe down there. That, that, is a, that is news. Yeah, that is news. <laughs> <laughs> to police captain, I was just wondering if there was going to be any kind of formal announcement on that in front of the council. I think we've done that ceremony? in the past. Pinning ceremony, that's. Yeah. Chief Steiner? Yes. Once <laughs> 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 your heart settles down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to rebound here for a second. But, um, yes, uh, uh, Tanya Harmoning was the detective sergeant and has been for a couple of years. She was promoted to captain last week. Um, she's currently attending the Northwestern School of Police Staff and Command off-site. Um, but yeah, we're, we are planning on doing uh, a pinning and uh, it's probably going to be in October, but I, I have to get with her and, and try to pin down a date that works for her. And like I said, she's been off-site now for the last week or so and that goes into November, but um, she'll be available and I'm sure, I'm sure we'll be recognizing her achievement in publicly here. Excellent. I know she's been with, uh, with the police department for quite a long time. I just wanted to give my public recognition and congratulations. So uh, it sounds like I'll have that opportunity mm -hmm. in a formal meeting well. as well. Councilmember Gaskoviak, anything else? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good tonight. Any other business to come before council? Move to adjourn. Second. second. Motion by Geisler, second by Ray Rauer to adjourn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We're adjourned. <laughs>